social media has become a preferred channel for users to initiate communication. Uh, not responding creates the optics that you ignore your users, right? And this feeling of being ignored can quickly escalate into an actual social media crisis. From Tyler Technologies, it's the Tyler Tech Podcast, where we talk about issues facing communities today and highlight the people, places, and technology making a difference. I'm your host, Jeff Harrell. I'm the Director of Content Marketing for Tyler, and I'm so glad you joined me. Social media. It's become an important communication channel for government. In fact, in the 2020 study we did with the Center for Generational Kinetics, over half, and get this, over half of both Gen Z and millennials said they prefer to get information from their local government via social media. So we know it is an important channel. Well, back in episode 21, Heather Daniels, who is Tyler's social media specialist, gave us five tips to improve your social media. And today she is back to give us five social media mistakes to avoid. Well, Heather has lots of experience in social media, having run social media for both the city of Los Angeles and the city of Sunnyvale, California. So she's got tons of things to share with us today. Here's my conversation with Heather Daniels. Well, Heather, we're super excited to have you back. I know you were here for episode 21 talking about five tips for social media success. Today, we're going to flip that around a little bit and talk about some of the mistakes people make. And I, I'm sure you didn't make any of these when you were running social media for the city of Los Angeles and, and some of your other roles. I'm sure you made none of these, right? Oh, of course not. Of course not. I right. sure didn't. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, definitely. We want to talk about top five mistakes, right? I could probably sit here and think about all of the mistakes. There's probably more than five, of course. I definitely want to mention top five mistakes that I may or may not have made uh, in my career. Uh, I do want to say this, though. These mistakes can definitely be solved if you have an overarching social media strategy in place. So with a social media strategy in place, uh, not only will you ensure your social media efforts are working to support your overall business objectives, you avoid making these five costly mistakes. Uh, number one would definitely be not targeting a specific audience for your content. Without a targeted approach to social media marketing, your efforts will be frustrating and fruitless. However you want to frame your users, be it customers, consumers, residents, or citizens, if you do not define the characteristics, the demographics, the psychographics, of your existing users, it becomes next to impossible to grow your base, boost any sort of conversions, and to increase your brand's awareness. So without those five W's, right, the, the why, the who, the where, when, and what, we lose all of the tangible benefits that successful social media creates. And Heather, does this fall into that idea of you know, hey, one size fits all, and I want to do just kind of a blanket social media and not really thinking about what who your target is, number one, but what they care about. And so then it doesn't really resonate because you're not sharing information that your residents really care about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. That's great. So number one is making sure you have a well, I guess the mistake is not targeting or not having a targeted approach with your social media. That's great. What's number yes. two? Number two, cross-posting. Posting the same content across all platforms. Uh, and in an effort to save time and resources, it is very tempting to reshare the same content across social media platforms. But the immediate benefit does not outweigh the long-term disadvantages. Uh, when you do this cross-posting, uh, you are, in essence, totally disregarding things like message length, uh, image formatting, things that are platform specific. So what works well on Twitter may not work well on LinkedIn or Facebook, right? So although you are well within the message limit, 
uh, you would still need to consider user handles and hashtags working the same across all platforms. So by repeating content, you also run this risk of getting your account suspended on some of these social platforms uh, because the optics are you, your account has been hacked or you know, you're know you spammy. So we always wanna make sure our messages are fresh and unique really for every post on each platform. Heather, I can see how this mistake happens. People are busy and they you know, create a post and then just share it on mm -hmm. all the platforms. So I can see why it happens. But to your point, if you're not really understanding how that platform works, what's going to be effective on that platform, Twitter is very different than what works on Facebook and Instagram. So I could see how, I could see why it happens, but I could also see why it's a big mistake because, you, you know, if you don't have the time to do a targeted approach, maybe you should narrow down the number of platforms you even use. Would, would that be accurate? Absolutely. Um... Absolutely. Uh, if it's too much to, if you're finding that you're spending too much time, too many resources in crafting the sort of unique messaging for all of the platforms you're on, and you just don't have the ability to vary up your messaging, perhaps it is time to take a look at consolidating your overall social media presence down to maybe two instead of four. I think that's a mistake. I've made in the past is, well, there's all these new platforms. We got to be on all of them. You know, there's always something new coming down the pike. Now it's clubhouse and, and tele telegram or telegraph or whatever yeah. that one is. <laughs> so I think I'm kind of adding a, my own mistake here, I guess, is you don't have to be on all of them. In fact, you, you probably should focus on the ones that you know your constituents are on and really target that and and be more tailored for that particular platform so that you'll have better engagement. Absolutely. Quality over quantity. Yes. Awesome. So you said it in three words and I said it in a bunch of words. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is great. I love that one and two are, are, are related. It's really understanding who and, and how. And so let's go into number three. What's the number three big mistake that you can make on social media? Yeah, number three, uh, not responding to comments in a timely manner. It's really become a cardinal rule in social media marketing. Respond to all social media comments, uh, negative or positive, regardless of platform, right? We definitely live in a culture of accountability and social media has become a preferred channel for users to initiate communication. Uh, not responding creates the optics that you ignore your users. Right, and this feeling of being ignored can quickly escalate into an actual social media crisis. I go back to the social media strategy. Uh, your strategy should definitely include some sort of key components for social customer service, right? Brand monitoring, having an internal process for responding on social media as well. And does this go back to, you know, I've been in marketing a long, long time and traditional marketing was hey, we're, we're going to create a message and we're going to send that message out one way. But with social media coming in the picture, what, 10, 15 years ago, whenever it was, now it's become, and even more so now, two-way communication. So getting that old way of thinking that this is a one way, I'm sharing a message to my target, we talked about in mistake number one. This is really your constituents or whoever's receiving that message, they're expecting a two-way communication. Absolutely. That's that sort of set it and forget it uh, mindset. We definitely all need to move away from that. Absolutely. Because we're really now starting to carry on a conversation versus a, a one-way communication. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. I love it. So comment, and how, how quickly, when you say timely, what does that mean? Does it depend on the platform or how? What, what's your guidance there in terms of timeliness? Uh, honestly, uh, my guidance there would be within 24 hours. Got it. Um, if it's a business day, definitely within 24 hours. If it's something that happens on the weekend and you do not have business hours, I think it's uh, suitable to think that it would be within, you know, the next business day. <music> Good stuff. Okay, we're at number four. What's the fourth mistake that we see being made in social media? 
yeah, number four is not posting enough or posting too much, right? That sort of frequency. Uh, both of which have negative effects on your social media engagement, right? So there needs to be a balance between being informative and annoying. Um, having a content schedule definitely helps to create consistency and user retention, right? It allows you to see that bigger picture of your content plan, and it really helps you maintain a regular flow of content. There are a lot of suggested guidelines on the best times to post and how often, but I would definitely take these suggestions for what they are worth, actual suggestions. Instead of following, right, this sort of one size all fits approach, take the time to really understand the posting frequency that best achieves your overall social media marketing goals. And do they get to that level by doing just testing or what, how do you figure out what the right cadence is, right? The right frequency is for you. Oh, definitely. You would really need to rely on your analytics. Uh, you want to take a look at your data. Where in the time of day uh, are your users most active? Uh, you want to take a look at the types of posts that do best, uh, that resonate well. And you want to create a formula based on that. And you just pointed something out that I think you're really, really good at here at Tyler is not only how often, but when, the time of day. So using that analytics, is that how you kind of figure out when to post as well? Yes. It's, it's of utmost importance. You want to post when your users are actually online uh, and not when they are not online because uh, it's just, it's wasted effort, right? And I, my understanding is that some platforms like Twitter, you can get away with posting more often. And there's other platforms, I think Facebook would probably fall into this category, a little less often. Is there a place to start if someone's like, hey, I'm not really sure where to start? Is there just a rule of thumb and then from that they can learn based on analytics? Yeah, I, I think rule of thumb, generally speaking, Twitter is a large place. It's a lot of uh, Twitter chatter going on. And to kind of break into that, you really want to look at the frequency of posting three times, three to four times a day, uh, anywhere between three or four hours apart. Facebook you want to look at possibly posting twice a day. Uh, and LinkedIn, you can really post once a day. Got it. That's right. Good guidance there. Okay. So either posting not enough or too often. Boy, I've seen those people post too often. And I'm very quick to unfollow because it's just still <laughs> up your feed. So right. I think that one really hits close to home. All right. We're already at number five. What's the fifth mistake that a lot of people make on social yeah, media? Yeah. Number five. Uh, using only one type of image, right? We all know that content posts with relevant images receive more engagement, but we want to be careful to not overuse the same type of image, right? So relying too much on stock photos, for example, there's that risk that other people are going to use the same photos within the same platform around the same time. So you, you lose that sort of uh, uniqueness, right? You want to give uh, your valuable content a better chance of getting seen by switching up the types of visuals you use. Social media is definitely a big and competitive environment, and you always have to find ways to stand out. So incorporate other content types, GIFs. UGC is a big one, user-generated content. You can't get any more unique than that, and also video. And Heather, does this go back to almost your your first point or first, maybe it's second point around understanding your audience and the platform you're on. Cause I, I think of LinkedIn, you want a little bit more professional looking photo I'd imagine. And Facebook, you could probably get away with something less formal Instagram. I know you, you probably want to make sure that is your, your strongest images. Are there some guidelines based on platforms? Yeah. You know, so I think that if you just keep in mind that all of your uh, audience, uh, they are unique and they deserve that sort of unique approach. Invest in a professional. Stock photography is great. Yeah, I, there's, a use, there's a use for it, uh, but you definitely want to, like I said, incorporate other image types. Is there necessarily a guideline? No, it's really going to depend on your brand 
right? The tone that you want to give across on social media, build your content pieces around your image. Your image should be able to tell your story without the content being there. If the image does not do that, then it's not the best image for your content post. I love that. So I think a lot of times we, we think of image as an afterthought. Oh, I gosh, gosh, mm-hmm. I need to have an image with this post. But you're saying don't make it an afterthought. Bring it to the front. Make, make it something that you think about first in that way you're going to select by default the right image for that post. Absolutely. Love that. That's great. Well, that's five, but if anyone listens to this podcast, no, we love to add a bonus and I don't want to put you on the spot, Heather, but (laughs) is there a a bonus that we can offer to the listeners? You know, bonus, I would really have to say that grammar rules still apply on social media. You mean I can't get away with uh, the new lingo and (laughs) and misspellings and deleting vowels and things like that that are popular on text messaging? No, no. Not unless your audience is used to that, right? So if you you have an audience that is, you know what, I'm not even going to say that because that's not a best practice either, Jeff. Let's back on up. Okay, so (laughs) no. (laughs) You threw me with that one. (laughs) No. So grammar rules still apply on social. Uh, You don't have to be official, right, with AP style or anything like that. Uh, But you want to make sure that you are spelling everything correctly, that your tense is correct. Uh, And you definitely don't want to have any typos in your social media posts. I can't tell you, Heather, the number of typos or people that don't know the difference between a part and a part. (laughs) Some of those... (laughs) pet peeves. I think this is a good one. I'm not the greatest speller in the world, which is why I use tools to help me. But I think Uh this is a great one because I think that can be a mistake people make. They think, oh, it's just social media. People will forgive it, but it's still a professional channel for government agencies, right? Absolutely. Awesome. Well, love it. That's five plus a bonus. We'll go through those again real quickly. Number one, not being targeted enough don't use a one-size-fits-all or blanket when you're thinking about your social media target number two using a one-size-fits-all approach to your platforms cross-posting the same content across different platforms in fact if you're doing that you may want to think about narrowing the number of platforms that you use number three not commenting quickly enough remembering that this is a two-way communication and people expect a reply. And number four is either posting too often or not often enough, understanding the platform you're using, best practices there, and then testing based on your analytics and seeing what tends to resonate. And not only how often, but when as well. That's a great one. Number five, using the right image to tell the story based on the platform. I love that. And our bonus grammar, getting a second set of eyes. We call that it Tyler SSOEing. I think having a second set of eyes on your social media post is a great idea. Heather, this is awesome. Really appreciate all these great things to avoid. Yeah, it was great. Thanks for having me. Uh, hope to be back. Yeah. If someone wants to get in contact with you, Heather, what's the best way for them to do that? Because I'm sure there's people that may have follow-up questions for you. Yeah. LinkedIn is the best place. So it's at uh, HL Daniel. D-A-N-I-E-L-S. You say H-L Daniels? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Awesome. Well, Heather, thanks again. I appreciate your expertise and insight in helping us understand some things to avoid in social media. Thanks, Jeff. Well, thank you, Heather, for your expertise, your wisdom, and your insight. I will add the five mistakes plus the bonus to the show notes. And remember, we have new podcast episodes dropping every other Monday. So please subscribe. We have lots of things planned throughout this summer. So again, this is Jeff Harrell for Tyler Technologies. Thanks again for joining me. We'll talk to you soon.